Good morning and a very warm welcome to today's reflection, which is on Matthew uh, chapter 26, verses 17 to 35. It's quite a long one, so make sure you're nice and comfortable and we will begin. On the first day of the festival of the unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he, did, if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answers, answered, you have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and sa give it, gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. This passage is about betrayal and denial. But there is also hope and grace. Jesus knows that the disciples who love him are human and weak, just like us. He knows he will be betrayed and he calls it out. Jesus knows that he will be abandoned and denied and he calls that out too. Jesus knows that his closest friends will sin against him and whilst Judas ultimately condemns himself as well as Jesus, Jesus doesn't give up on his disciples. Jesus gives Judas every opportunity to change his mind and he doesn't specifically point him out either. What he does say is the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Surely that's all of them. They all share in the bowl with Jesus. I wonder if perhaps they all betray Jesus in one way or another. Peter's denial is highlighted, but Jesus goes on to say, this very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. That's exactly what happens, isn't it? Jesus is arrested and they all scatter. They run away and hide. Peter, in some ways, is the bravest because he stays around to see what happens. But being openly questioned about his association with Jesus is too much. He's too scared and he denies Jesus just as predicted. And where is everyone else? Even at Jesus' crucifixion, most of the disciples are absent. Only John is recorded as being in the crowd with Mary and the other women. We don't know where the others are. Peter isn't even mentioned. It's easy to condemn the actions of the disciples. But they didn't know the whole story. They didn't know about the resurrection, not really. They didn't know that their sins and ours 
can be forgiven. They didn't know of Jesus' promise to return someday to establish his everlasting kingdom. And they didn't know that Jesus can never be taken away from us. They didn't know that. When Jesus was arrested, the disciples were terrified, overwhelmed with fear for Jesus, but also fear for themselves, for their future. Fear that they that would have multiplied as they lived through, through the reality of Jesus' death, his trial, his crucifixion. Their hopes and dreams of a Messiah were crumbling before their very eyes and they were fa faced with real personal danger. In fact, they needed to scatter and hide to stay safe so that when Jesus returned, he could gather them, restore and reassure them, commission them and equip them with the Holy Spirit so that they could go on to spread his good news and be his hands and feet here on earth. The denial and the abandonment of his disciples were in the past, forgiven, and it was time to step out in faith. There was work for, their, for these disciples to do. As for Judas, I think he would have been forgiven too if he'd lived long enough to see the risen Christ, Christ and repent. As Christians, we should hear this story and know that there is hope and that God is full of grace. Because even though we sometimes become overwhelmed with fears for, for the future, sometimes doubt God's word and act as if it isn't true, sometimes make promises to God that we can't keep and fall short. Like the disciples, we are forgiven when we believe in Jesus Christ and embrace the truth that he died to save us from our sin, that his blood was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins, that when we truly repent, we are forgiven. God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit, thankfully, are realistic about the human condition, that our choices are free, but aren't always good ones. God doesn't condemn us, but reaches out to help us and heal us, lead us and guide us. No matter what happens, God is always there for us, even when we aren't there for him. He wants to us to be close to him and he close to us, which is why he makes it possible for our relationship to be restored. More than anything, God wants a right relationship with each of us that is wholesome and true. So today I'm asking you to spend a little time with God, making sure that you are right with him and ask him to send his Holy Spirit to equip and help you to do that. Amen. Well, I hope, uh, well, thank you for, for being here with me today and I hope you have a great day and may God bless you. Thank you for listening.